Well, well, boys and girls, and everybody else in between, another Saturday has come to an end, which means college football week seven is now over. Big boy variety here. Games just ended for, you know, the last set of games for this week. And um, I don't know where to begin. I don't, I really don't, because, I mean, today was a crazy day. Just when you think this day would be boring, it gets pretty crazy really quick. First off, I don't know how in the world Fox got stuck with West Virginia, Kansas, but that's exactly what happened. That that game exactly happened. Kansas was up by 10 for about a few minutes, and then, you know, West Virginia took care of business and blew them out. So there's that. Then, at the same time, the number one team was cooking up a storm. I'm talking Trevor Lawrence threw for 400 yards, five touchdowns. Clemson's defense smothered Georgia Tech. 73-7. to Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Whew. Looking real rough out there for ACC fans. Looking real rough. Real rough telling you and in the meantime while all of that was going on while I was watching those um, the SEC decided to get to have a little giveaway sale at least Auburn and Tennessee did they decided to have a little giveaway sale on form of interceptions Tennessee threw two pick sixes you know Guantanamo threw two pick sixes against Kentucky and Kentucky blew them out Kentucky hasn't won at Tennessee since 84 Auburn, who should have lost last week, Bo Nix threw three turnovers. Three bad interceptions. Really, really bad. I think one of them was a pick six. I don't remember. But what I do know is that Auburn did, in fact, lose to South Carolina for the first time since 1933. Should have lost last week, but that's okay. They lose this week. So... So, yeah, one of the top ACC teams was in action. How, how did the other two fare? Well, you know, as we moved on throughout the day, there was UCF Memphis. But I'll talk about that game in a moment because that game was something else. But Notre Dame, Louisville was pretty much the highlight of what was going on, you know, at, at, at the second portion of the day of games. I mean, I know there was Texas A&M, Mississippi State, but Mississippi State is not good. Come on, let's be real. They didn't have positive rushing yards against A&M. They didn't have positive rushing yards. They had negative two yards. Absolutely dreadful. And they were getting blown out basically anyway. I mean, A&M only gave up 14, but it felt like it was a blowout the entire game. Mississippi State couldn't do anything. It was over. So what about Louisville, Notre Dame? Well, you think Notre Dame is going somewhere, and I still see people trying to say that Notre Dame is going to do such and such to a certain team that we'll also talk about in a few minutes. Um, that's not happening. That is definitely not happening. Clemson, score against Clemson, scoring 12 points is going to get you blown out. Yeah, Notre Dame can run the ball. They do have a running back in the backfield with Williams. Uh, but Ian Book needs to get that ball down the field, man. He only threw for 107 yards. I mean, he barely threw for 100 yards. Louisville just made way too many penalties. They just had way too many penalties. That was really the only reason Malik Cunningham did as best as he could out there for Louisville. It was clear that he was carrying the load out there. And, I mean, 12-7. to 7. Ugly game. Notre Dame can't convert in the end zone against the good defense. And, I mean, it was just it was just rough. Notre Dame barely squeaks by. They had to the, milk the rest of the clock to get the win. So, you know, meh type of thing right there. But, yeah, UCF Memphis um, was something else entirely. Let me tell you. I'm telling you right now, it was crazy, crazy, crazy. Like, UCF was up 
35-14 at one point. Then, you know, I turned that game off. It was about 5 o'clock Central Time anyway. It's about 5 o'clock Central Time. I go up and make myself something to feast upon for dinner and come back. And Memphis has suddenly came back. It's The score is crazy. Both quarterbacks in this game, Brady White and Dylan Gabriel, combined for 1,000 yards and 13 touchdowns. Absolutely, these offenses were crazy, tearing it up. Dylan Gabriel especially with 285-plus yard bombs. But in the end, you know, UCF came all the way down to, because Memphis had taken the lead with about a minute to go, came all the way down, and guess what it ended up being? It ended up being college kickers. And you already know the stories of many college kickers. Miss kick. UCF loses to Memphis for the first time in a long time. And another barn burner with that matchup ends in something crazy, man. A miss kick. So, Memphis still has some momentum in the American. Unfortunately, we couldn't get to see the top team in the American. Cincinnati, because of positive COVID tests, we couldn't see Oklahoma State either because of positive COVID tests. So, yeah, a little miffed on that. Also, Friday night was a uh, rather Wednesday and Friday night. Both Wednesday and Friday night, pretty interesting. BYU, keep an eye on BYU. I know their schedule was basically destroyed by COVID-19. And they had to basically make this entire thing up the entire time. Uh, but, hey, they're still undefeated. Zach Wilson is playing like a baller out there in, Mormons, in Mormontown. And SMU, you know, it was college kickers out there, too. We didn't watch this game. It was on a Friday night. I was not intending on watching that game. I don't really watch football on Fridays. But, you know, they had to go to overtime to beat Tulane. And Tulane is no slouch. No slouch at all. So, yeah, they had to go over time to beat that. Speaking of beating, you know how Dan Mullen said, oh, well, we could beat this COVID nonsense. We could get every fan up inside Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. Welp, that was a lie. LSU Florida got postponed, along with a Missouri game, by the way, also got postponed. And, um... Here's the thing. They have all tested positive for COVID-19. Do not reap what you can't sell. Do not. Do not stop pass go. Do not collect $200. Do not try and collect $200. Don't be greedy. Don't don't try and, you know, take everybody else's plates because you're going to get you're going to get burned in the end. And Dan Mullen now you got to go into quarantine for a few weeks, buddy. So good job there. It's okay, though. Florida and LSU are not, don't have defenses at all. So it doesn't really matter right now. What about the nightcap? And I know before we even talk about it, Miami's back. We already discussed Miami's not back. I mean, they did beat Pitt, though. I mean, if that's any consolation, they beat Pitt. It's good, right? Okay, cool, okay. All right. Uh, before we talk about the big two for these top five teams, because half the top five, all five, all five of the you know, best teams in the country, as per the voters, you know, their thoughts right now, play. Virginia Tech decided to destroy Boston College and were saying Boston College is sneaky and stuff like that. No, you know, I mean, it was just like Virginia Tech decided to say, forget about all that, threw them away. So what about the nightcap? Well, North Carolina has lost. It was a valiant comeback effort, but honestly, Florida State blew them out in that first half. And they didn't even score in the second half. Florida State didn't. But the defense did just enough. 
some bad, bad plays for North Carolina in this game. Three drops towards the end of the game, a pick six. You know, the defense was getting ran over, getting big plays for Mr. Travis, um, Florida State's new quarterback, Jordan Travis. I mean, it, it was just going to be inevitable at this point if you're not going to play good defense. They, and North Carolina had been softly, you know, not playing complete games of football because they allowed a bunch of points to Virginia Tech when they were blowing them out, and, and Virginia Tech still was in that game for a long period of time. And, I mean, UNC barely beat them. UNC barely beat Boston College. So this was probably bound to happen at some point. This was probably bound to happen. And it was just not North Carolina's day. Just not, you know, what Matt Brown intended. And in the last, certainly not least, category of, hey, this was supposed to be the game of the year. Um, well, let me tell you, it did not live up to the hype. Well, you know, the second half didn't live up to the hype. First half did. Second half, it got away from Georgia. Now, Georgia's run defense was, did well enough, you know. I mean, they did well enough to keep Najee Harris contained, but the, but the secondary could not keep Michi, Devontae Smith, or Jalen Waddle contained. Could not keep them contained. Those three guys combined for four touchdowns in that game. I mean, Stetson Bennett threw three interceptions. Three. I mean, the first one was really bad. Second one was bad. The third one was bad. And I mean, Alabama just ran away with it in the second half. Just bulldozed past Georgia in the second half. And, I mean, you know, Alabama's defense still is kind of suspect, but but, I mean, come on. Georgia didn't do enough to keep Alabama on their toes. They didn't do enough. They should have, but they just did not do it. And they paid the price for it. If you turn the ball over against Nick Saban, who, by the way, tested positive for COVID, and then, you know, three straight days tested negative for COVID. So, I don't know. He's... And one picture that was screenshotted, and you you probably see that on Twitter somewhere, where Nick Saban just looks, he looks dreadful. He look he looks sick out there, but he was out there with these guys anyway, coaching them up. And Alabama continues to move them on. So, Big Ten Mountain West coming back next week, and we have Mountain West after dark. So that means, considering the fact that, you know, most of the videos have been, you know, out at about 11 or so, you know, now, on the, um, on, in the central time zone, you know, midnight on the east coast, now that's probably going to change with Mountain West After Dark being a thing, and eventually, in about two weeks, after the Mountain West gets going, Pac-12 out the dark. So it's going to be very interesting to see how things go. Um, so that means recaps will probably move to Sunday by that point. But, yeah, what did we learn today? Um, you know, we, we learned that there may be only three teams. and Potentially, whoever the fourth team is, I don't know who that fourth team is going to be. Could it be Georgia? don't know. Georgia probably needs something. They need something to have a complete season to salvage their season. North Carolina just lost and they were looking on the edge of taking an L already. The Big 12 only has Oklahoma State, but can we even see them play? Because, thanks, Baylor. And I'm worried about again, I'm worried about you know the game with Texas next week for Baylor too, because Baylor's just having positive tests everywhere they go because they just can't seem to stay isolated down there and wake up. And what about the Big Ten? Big Ten coming back could be just Fields' to take. Could be the conference that could take it all the way 
you know, the Big Ten could challenge Clemson. I'm not sure about Alabama right now. I mean, Alabama has an offense. They have three talented wide receivers. They have Najee Harris in the backfield. But can their defense step it up? Because if they can't, they'll get steamrolled by Clemson. And it, but depending on how Ohio State looks, they might get steamrolled by the Buckeyes. And, you know, honestly, Ohio State's only real challenge, you know, in my opinion right now, is Penn State. I know Minnesota's there. I know Michigan's there. And they're playing, you know, for the little brown joke next week, which I will watch. But right now it's Clemson, Bama, Ohio State, and sub-14. Probably Oklahoma State, but, I mean, it's the Big 12 looking just got off of this year. So, and I don't know about the Pac-12. I don't think there's enough games there, and I don't think that, um, I don't think that those, you know, those seeding games are going to happen. I don't think they should happen in the Big Ten either. Just FYI. But, yeah, that's going to do it. Week seven's over. I'll talk to you about week eight Monday afternoon sometime. So, see you then.